So in this video, I'm going to talk about clonal expansion. <clears throat> in the other video that I posted, I discussed how each um, immune cell can have a unique antibody. So that, that is symbolized by these different shapes and these different colors that I've drawn on the different cells. And you'll see that they all have different antibodies the antibodies really should all have that Y-like structure, um, but it was really difficult to draw that small. So um, the different shapes just symbolize different variations on that normal antibody shape. And the way that clonal expansion works is that the cell or uh, a cell that has an antibody that can bind to whatever antigen is present is then going to multiply. And so really it's just a matter of which cell is activated and the activation occurs again through the binding of the antibody on the cell to an antigen. So perhaps we um, get some pathogen, some bacteria, so it should be quite a bit smaller than our um, immune cell. Really, it should be smaller than this, but we'll just draw it that way. And it has this type of antigen. We'll say it's some uh, glycoprotein or some protein on the surface of the bacterium. Um, and here I just want to note that bacteria have um, many proteins and glycoproteins, which are um, a protein with a carbohydrate chain attached um, on their surface. And so they, they display these Um, and really it's just that they exist on the surface of the bacteria uh, or the virus or whatever it may be and then the immune cell can bind to it and so specifically these guys are B cells and they are not yet activated but once this specific B cell um, binds to this antigen on the bacteria, then this B cell is going to be activated. And so then along with help from some other immune cells, including a T helper cell, which we're not going to talk too much about, um, but we'll just say that it um, releases some chemicals which influence this B cell, which uh, is going to cause it to multiply uh, through mitosis. And the really important thing about this is, you know, we're not getting rid of these other B cells. We're only making more of this specific B cell so that then we end up having lots of this specific B cell so that it can bind to whatever however many pathogens, hopefully, are present that have this specific antigen, which was bound by the original B cell. And so the goal here, again, is for all of these guys to bind to these bacteria that are present <clears throat> and this is going to do one of two things, or I could do both of them too. Um, it's going to inactivate this pathogen. It's going to inactivate this antigen specifically, and it's probably going to cause um, the degradation or the destruction of this pathogen by other cells. And so this is going to signal to macrophages <clears throat> is 
it's going to see that this is bound and it's going to see um, that this pathogen or this structure is a non-self cell, which just means that it does not display specific proteins, which um, all of the cells in the body should have. And so it's going to engulf this and um, destroy it. So I forgot to mention that this is called clonal selection. This whole process. Uh, and the other really important part that I didn't mention is that this initial activated B cell is also going to, um, or some of these B cells in the population as this replicates, some of these B cells are then going to just produce a ton of these antibodies and release them into the extracellular matrix. And when these come into contact with the pathogen and the antigen, even though there's no B cell present, these guys could still bind. And because they bind, it's like a marker and it lets the B plasma cells know that it needs to destroy this. And this guy is a B effector cell. Oh, sorry, no. Yes, this is an effector cell or a plasma cell.